Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, Taz uh, Sampson. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting, Life Unscripted. I'm so grateful to have you here today. How are you? I'm well. What about yourself? I'm doing great. I'm really happy to have you share your story. This is our Unleash Your story uh, podcast that we do every Wednesday. And I'm really excited to have you share because you've created a company, Seven Principles, you're the CEO, uh, but you've also been an entrepreneur for quite some time and you've, it's not always been an easy uh, trek. Some of us entrepreneurs who listen in, we know that it, it isn't day one that you're out of the gate successful, but you're gonna share some tips for successful bootstrapping for anyone who might just be getting out of the gate or who just needs to get back on track. So before we go to share all those wonderful details, share with the audience a little bit about your backstory. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And for listeners out there, I'm certainly happy to uh, share a lot of uh, things that I've learned on my uh, entrepreneurship journeys. Uh, my name is Chas Sampson. I'm originally from Fayetteville, North Carolina. I served in the United States Army as well for five years. That's uh, what pretty much got me out of the city of Fayetteville to, to an extent. Um, being in the Army for five years taught me a lot, taught me a lot of discipline, taught me a lot of uh, a lot of exposure. I learned a lot from all the places I've been as well. And uh, upon leaving the military, I did five years in ETS, of course. And <clears throat> once I did that, I, of course, started working in the federal government as a raider. And I learned a lot about rating, rating cases and, of course, how this all works. And that's what led me to the current firm that I have now. So minus some other jobs I had in between. But yeah, rating, rating cases was the most fulfilling. And I left there. I worked at the Pentagon for a while. And after that, I went ran for mayor in Spring Lake, North Carolina. And here I am now. So, yeah. <clears throat> and, and what prompted you to start Seven Principles? And what exactly is it? Well, Seven Principles is monitored after Seven Army Values, which the acronym is Leadership. It's L-D-R-S-H-I-P. And that stands for loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. And I started it mostly in part because I saw that other veterans like myself were extremely frustrated with the VA claims process. Mm -hmm. And I never envisioned this would become as, as big of a business as, as it's become, but it initially started as a way to help my fellow, uh, fellow veterans understand their cases, understand what the VA wants and requires to make sure that they you know, have a successful claim. Mm -hmm. And you know, through doing that, that's what created Seven Principles. I was trying to find a good a business name. I didn't want anything after my own name. Mm -hmm. I wanted something that was, that was more unique and that was uh, independent in nature, uh, like most corporations are. We are a C corporation. So uh, Seven Principles became it because of its close uh, resemblance to our service and what we do for, for our veterans and military personnel, too. Wow, that, that's cool to know. Do you also work with paramilitary, like police officers, or not so much? No, no, man. We, I mean, we have a lot of law enforcement members that, were, that are veterans that serve in the military. So in that capacity, yes. But mm -hmm. in the capacity of working with police officers that are not prior service military, unfortunately, we do not offer services to that demographic. We love police officers. We, we, we actually do give uh, quite a bit to the, I think it's the Police Benevolent Fund. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we actually do a lot of giving away to, to police officers. I do ride alongs personally myself with uh, almost every precinct I've lived in. I've moved around the country a bit and been in the military and working in the federal government. But uh, no, in regards to services offered, we don't have a, a specific service for police officers unless they are veterans, which is process military. Yeah. Now, what are some of the cases that come through to your desk and that may be someone who's now I have a, a cousin in the military? Uh, what might they have to deal with later on that they should be made aware of so that they're ahead of the game? That's, that's a great question. So the big thing we're taught in the Army is that if it's not in writing, it does not exist. And I probably say this, I want to say 50 times per day to either our attorneys, our internal personnel, and more importantly, our clients. So right now, if someone's in the military, if we understand your question, if someone's in the military and they're looking to probably transition out either ETS or retirement, the first thing they should be worried about is how well it's the documentation of their medical records. If their medical records are on point, uh, and on point meaning they have a diagnosis, they have been in service, they have a nexus um, that ties these things together as well as some chronicity, those are the requirements by the Department of Veteran Affairs to substantiate a case. If they meet those elements of proof, uh, they're going to have a, a very uh, easy transition in regards to the VA disability claim side. But if they don't, I, I would highly encourage to make sure that the evidence is up to par for themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, does your does seven principles help them get those things in order, or is that something they should just look on on their side? Uh, 
we we are a, a, a organization that literally takes the veterans' hands and walk them into a paycheck. Um, and that paycheck, of course, comes monthly of my first day life, like mine does as well. It's the VA disability benefits, and we do everything for them. So most of the times we get, and if I can show you my office here, yeah, <laughs> I got files over here. Well, yeah, I'll show you. If you can just look down here, <laughs> I mean, there's files and there's golf clubs and, and rec rec records everywhere. Uh, wow. But um, as you as you can as you can see here, we take and mm -hmm. these are these are cases that I deal with personally sometimes. I get some clients that I meet, you know, either they might be two star generals or colonels mm. and, you know, they, they, you know, we have a relationship. So of course I will work some of their cases myself. And in some cases are just super important where I have to get my hands on it myself that I want to see, but you know, to answer your question, mm. uh, as long as a veteran brings us medical records, we will work it from there. We will tell them where their opportunities are. We will tell them where um, their case is weak at. We will advise them on things they should be seen for. Like perfect example, I had a guy today, he's a colonel out here and he's, he's a 06. 06 for the army is a colonel, but for the Navy, I think it's a commander or a captain or something like that. But the ranks are a little different, but they both are a pay grade 06. And he came to me and he has a lot of complaints. He's never really followed up with his care, but those complaints can equate to a diagnosis. And some of those diagnoses equate to 50, 60, 70%. For VA, I mean, we're talking fifteen hundred, six hundred dollars per month for the mm. rest of his life. So, yeah, it's very important that those are, that are in the military that are transitioning out very soon, or mm -hmm. they plan to with the next year to make sure their medical records up to par. Wow. So, um, what is, is it? Is the system really complicated? Is that why you've had to create seven principles because the system's really hard for the average folks to go through and, and figure out, you know, how to get your claims looked at and go through properly? For the average lay person, yes, it's extremely complicated. Um, mm -hmm. For the average lay person, yeah. uh, to be honest with you, I mean, I don't think there's many things that are complicated in our society. It's just yeah. a matter of whether you have the understanding or the knowledge or the access to the information. The information is there, the access is there, but the process is very slow. It's kind of grueling sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, minor mistakes can cause huge, um, you know, a huge decision that's not in your favor. So, I guess to, to the average lay person, yeah, absolutely, this is very complicated. And even to some of our, I mean, we have clients that are lawyers that still have problems navigating, but it's just because that's not an area that they're competent in. Their competencies come from another practice area. So, so yeah. I, I would say to someone that's not really in the industry, not really paying attention to how claims work, it could be a little complicated. Uh, and, and to a lay person, it's definitely very complicated. Yeah. Well, let's go further with the bootstrapping because i'm sure yeah. getting your business up and going wasn't always easy breezy uh, what were some of the challenges you had in, in getting your business up and going keeping quiet <laughs> honestly i, I mean I, yeah seriously I, I don't think that i have I, I mean when i look at other entrepreneurs that i that i deal with day-to-day -day basis and i hear their stories i hear their their failures and i hear their great success as well i'm like wow mm -hmm. i'm always floored I was actually very fortunate that it wasn't as difficult for me to do this. I had to keep quiet about what I was doing for a while, mostly in part because I knew I couldn't manage the amount of income and clients that would come in. And so for me, the, the biggest challenge was one, keeping quiet. But then once I did become very vocal about what we were doing as far as telling the world and mm -hmm. more people, to tell, we, we've gained, I, I want to say 80% of our clients have come from referrals. Wow. Um, 80%. Uh, we just started running ads. We, we're in year eight now. We just started running ads last year. So, and the only reason why we wanted to run ads is because we wanted to become more of a household brand. Our ads are regular, <laughs> regular ads. Just say, this is what we do. It's yeah. not really a, I mean, there's a level of a call to action, but it's mm -hmm. more so just telling you this, we're here as well. So we can be able to scale. But honestly, the biggest problem for me was keeping quiet. And then once we did become very vocal about maybe six years ago, that's where we really exploded. Um, mm -hmm. This is a very, very niche feel. And not only is it very niche, there's a whole different language amongst us as military and veterans that we speak and understand that if a veteran says something, something to me a certain way, I'm going to be there. I'm going to drop whatever's going on and I'm going to be there to be for that, for that vet. So mm -hmm. it's just a different level of, of um, intimacy in regards mm -hmm. to our clientele base and what we do for our clients to where once you tell the world how great you are and then you prove it and then mm -hmm. other people, you know, um, certify that, then yeah, the gates are just wide open. I, I mean, this last in January, we went, we, we had a piece of content go viral and we ended up gaining 1200 clients in a day. Well, so I mean, yeah, we're, we're talking to a lot of folks and this is why we're now getting more involved into the media and people more interested in what we do. So, uh, yeah, to answer the question, I, I think for us, for me, it was more so finding and grooming good leaders. Um, also reflecting on myself to make sure that I could be a great leader and, and knowing where I 
because I mean, entrepreneurship is very new. Most, you know, most problems come from other angles, but my problem is more, more so about making sure I just develop a really good solid team and mm -hmm. make sure I look at myself as a leader every single day and say, how am I motivate my team? How are we finding ways to win for our clients? And how are we sustaining our mission to serve more and more veterans across the world? That's been my everyday challenge for the last almost eight years now. Well, you know what I'm getting from you? It's not just a matter of, okay, let's keep it hush hush so we don't blow up our our clientele too much and not be able to handle it. I've, I've heard of companies who've grown too quickly and gone under because mm -hmm. they couldn't serve properly. But also from what you're saying, because this is so niche oriented, finding the proper help and people administrative wise oh, yeah. that could work with you and be effective. Abs that, that's, that's absolutely. I mean, and, and this is a very niche subject matter as well. I mean, there's, I think when I was a Raider, I want to say there was maybe 300 of us in the country. So, I mean, it's not, it's also a very small field and I was fortunate to get the job at a very young age. I think I was like 26 when I got the job. I was very fortunate to get the job at a very young age, but most of the people in this field are also entering or in retirement. They're, they are actively retired, working a full-time job and they're, you know, saving some cash flow to be able to fully retire, maybe, you know, minimum retirement age, 62, 65, something like that. So, so yeah. for me, I was very fortunate to be in the field, but yes, hiring, hiring the right person to understand our mission understand how to talk to our clientele base or communicate, not even talk, communicate to our clientele base and also be able to execute the mission is one of the hardest, that's one of the biggest mm -hmm. hurdles that we have. Um, so we tend to, we tend to, um, to uh, I wouldn't say what work I use, we, we tend to recruit mm -hmm. federal officials to work for the firm um, that, you know, end up retiring or end up, um, you know, leaving the federal government and say, hey, here's an opportunity here. Uh, where you can complete the mission and do it in a way that's not as stressful as the VA would be. So yeah, and I love that because then also if you hire other um, VA or act, um, past veterans, that way they'll have the lingo, they'll know what's oh, important, yeah. and they'll be able to carry through. Um, now, how has finances been? Has there been struggles in that area? And what advice would you give to a new up and coming entrepreneur with regards to starting a business finance wise? Absolutely. Well, from a financial standpoint, my background is finance. So I had a, I had a bit of a, I had a bit of a, a bit of a forward progression, if you will, as well. But for me, I, I think the story for me was more so once you make all this money, what do you do with it? And so, you know, of course, we came into a, a lot of cash flow that came in. I had some cash management issues because we had um, pretty much people coming to office paying for stuff. And when they would pay, they were paying cash. And then we have employees that aren't trained to deal with cash. And so now today we lost $30,000, where to go? It just it vanished. And so I think honestly, cash management is one of those things where we had to really get strong about. Uh, we don't accept cash anymore. Obviously that was something that happened from years ago, but cash management. Uh, and then of course, from the bootstrapping standpoint, you obviously need, need some type of capital to, to be able to pay for payroll. What I did the first year or the first eight months was I did the service for free to get my name out there. And then once the services were free and people told everybody what I did and how great I was at it, then I hiked my prices up to a, a market level that mm -hmm. was appropriate for, you know, as a new guy, yeah. you, you're not gonna get to the market rate most times. You gotta be a little under sometimes, unless you offer some great immense value. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, oh, okay, yeah, I would pay that price point. Most veterans aren't gonna do it unless you have some skin in the game or a lot of experience. So um, that gave me the necessary experience I needed with all the people I was touching in that, in that eight period of time, eight month period of time. And then I hiked the prices up. And once I hiked up my prices to a point that was market level, or I wasn't basically working for free, mm -hmm. that's when I started to reinvest the money I was getting. And from reinvesting the money that I was given, I took the same money and just built real estate. And that's how I was able to have the collateral to when I wanted yeah. to do bigger projects. I had to, I had the ability to gain, I can call it bank and get a quarter million dollars or something yeah. like that. So yeah. that's that's how I did it. But you it was said, just the background. You said something really, really important. I just heard it from another mm -hmm. entrepreneur earlier today. And that was when she first got started, she really wanted to be in the photography arena, had little to no experience. So it's the first eight months were for free as yeah. a, um, a, what do you call it? Um, Freelancer? You know, yeah, free, uh, working under someone. Um, you or know, apprentice. Yes. Yeah, so to uh, apprentice, just to get that back you know, background. And uh, she said, I had no problem with that. I was glad to work. And you know, the thing is, and that's a lost art today is people realizing they have to get paid for everything. Oh, if Absolutely. I'm going to do some sort of work, I got to be paid for it. If yeah. you don't have the experience yet, you are paying <laughs> to get your experience. It's kind of like yeah. going to college uh, on the ground running. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was very that was a very ideal thing for me. And, and what I had did before that, because I was living in Washington, D.C which is not the, not, the, not the cheapest place in the country. So 
I had to actually leverage my 401k to filter in that loss of, of revenue coming in from that eight period time frame to make sure I can sustain in the next eight months when that when the clientele do come in. So yeah. that's what helped me get through financially without having, you know, employment as well. I, I think I had some income. Well, I had income coming in from real estate I invested in the military. So I, I had a I had a really good foundation. Honestly, I was I was definitely um, looking at other people's story. I, I was definitely privileged in a way mm. um, because I had my military background. I had military via disability coming in as well. Mm. Um, I had real estate passive income coming in also. Um, you know, I had other businesses that I had, you know, that, that, were, that were passive, like ATM mm. machines, stuff like that. Yeah. Stuff that was low, low maintenance that was also mm. coming in. So I was very fortunate, honestly. Yeah. And for me, financially, it wasn't a struggle. It was more so how do I properly manage it? How do I manage growth and how do I reinvest or collateralize what I have to grow into something bigger, so. Yeah, and what I'm loving from what I'm hearing is that you went in with the plan, a very con a concise plan and said, listen, I'm just not gonna wing this and say, I'm gonna work for free. It's like, I have a concise plan, eight months. I got other streams of income going on here. And then once I prove my worth, now I can start to, you know, charge for my services. Uh, those are some great lessons there. You, you've given so much value just in our little bit of time together. I don't want us to leave those. There's some veterans listening in, like my cousin soon to probably leave the military or anyone else. How can they get a hold of your company, find out more about what you do? How can they do that? Yeah, they can call, they can call us 24 seven at 770 veteran. That's V E T E. R-A-N, 770. And they also can visit our website at www.7principles.com. I love it. Well, I just have to thank you again, Chaz, for all the great work you're doing and your team members. Thank you so much for coming to share today on Savvy Broadcasting. You're great, brilliant. Thank you. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more Savvy episodes and Savvy Biz Tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.